Hey, Pro Guides family, Bonk here. Our journey to catalog the best mains of each character in Ultimate's enormous cast continues on with our third entry in the series. As per your guidance in the comments on our first video, we'll be continuing through the roster in order of their addition to the series. So, all of you Incineroar and Byleth mains who left comments saying that you better be featured, you've got time to make your meme come true. If only there was some kind of place where you could get on-demand coaching that could help you move closer to that goal. Like, like if you were able to go to a website and watch courses put together by some of the best players in the world, and the site posted daily content that would help you towards reaching that goal. Wait. But seriously, take a look over at ProGuides.com, linked in the description, for an extra boost on your road to improving in Ultimate. Not only that guys, but be sure to tune in right here to the YouTube channel every weekday at around 3pm Eastern Time where we have live class sessions that could be anything from me teaching you how to play a certain character, how to perform certain advanced techniques, you get to play some Wi-Fi games with me and each other, and I'll just answer any questions you have for me in chat. I'm loving the community aspect that we're all building upon right now, so let's just keep it going we got plans to get other players on the show in the future, so I'm just hoping to see you guys there. Thanks for continuing to come, seriously. With the dream in mind though, first, we want to learn more about you, the viewer, with our question of the day. Who is your favorite player? Simple as that. Tell us in the comments below, and we're going to tell you each of our favorites for these choice characters today. But with all that out of the way, I know, I'm sorry about the long intro. Let's pick up where we left off in part two and talk about the best Captain Falcon main in the world. This one is pretty up in the air, with there being solid reasoning to put either Fatality from Georgia or Nick C from Queens as Ultimate's number one Falcon. Let's get the facts on both. Fatality comes with quite a large legacy attached to his name from his time in Smash 4. He didn't miss a single iteration of the PGR during the game's life cycle and was ranked the 19th best Smash 4 player of all time on the PGR 100. Falcon's drop on the tier list hit him hard, but his thousands of hours on the character allowed him to not miss the first ranking season, sneaking on at 48th. But his grip slipped during the second half of the year, and plagued by bad losses, Fatality missed his first ranking in five years. His quest to return to the ranking this year hasn't gone so great so far either, with just a Leon and Puppe win to show for his three months. Nick C started competing in Smash 4 in 2015, around the same time as Fatality, but doesn't have anywhere close to the accolades that Fatality picked up during that time. Nick C was only able to break onto the New York City power rankings once in his Wii U career in the first quarter of 2017. But the past is the past, and when we put his ultimate resume side by side with Fatality, he keeps up. He's been just a few sets away from breaking into top 8 at a ton of larger events, finishing 13th at Shine, Let's Make Moves, Glitch 6, and Defend the North. He also finished off 2019 on a high note by getting second at the Players Ball Invitational, defeating Frozen, Venia, and Jen before being double eliminated by DeBuzz. These wins combined with his other fall wins over Mutes, Goblin, and Scat weren't enough to make the cut for top 50, but he did turn enough heads to end up on the X Factor survey for the season alongside Fatality. So he's been playing hotter as of late, so the choice is easily Nick C, right? Well, in the first three months of 2020, Nick has competed at one local and DQ'd out of Let's Make Big Moves because he was sick. So we haven't seen him compete in a high stakes scenario in almost four months, which is more concerning for me than Fatality's lukewarm events in 2020. So with all of this in mind, the title of Ultimate's best Falcon main goes to Fatality for now. But if upcoming events go well for Nick while Fatality continues to slump, the title won't be his for much longer. With that, we then get to the highest ranked player we'll get to talk about for quite a while with the best Peach main in the world, Samsora. The recently turned 22 year old started his journey playing Smash Bros competitively with Brawl at the very end of its life cycle. The first tournament that's listed on his Smash wiki page, Golden Chariot Brawl back in June of 2014, actually has its VODs online. They're incredibly choppy and the speed Brawl is played at doesn't do any favors, but getting to see the humble beginnings of someone who would eventually rise to be Ultimate's second best player is quite special. The commentator of his match against Brawlman saw this player that he would become by mentioning how technical his Peach looked and how crisp his movement was. This technical ability would soon have to face the unsure waters of a new game as the release of Smash 4, and with it the death of Competitive Brawl, was just three months away. Here's where we hit a bit of a snag in the record keeping. Samsora's Smash 4 tournament appearances don't start to pop up consistently until mid-2016, and the performance
performances he put up in that time period, like 49th at CEO 2016 and 2nd at Clutch City Clash, were enough to rank him as the 29th best player in the world. So either there's not completely accurate record keeping on his attendance at locals that allowed him to climb to the skill level, or the more likely, he trained vigilantly as a Wi-Fi warrior to make sure that he would be getting the most out of his bracket entry fee. But there's no confusion about how his Smash 4 moved forward from there. Samsora continued improving with every passing season of the game from 29th to 24th, 22nd, and finally finishing the last PGR before the release of Ultimate just outside the game's top 10. With Peach, a character that was 20th best in the game, he was able to take sets off many of the players who finished that last rank above him, like MKLeo, Tweak, and Buzz. Although he dabbled with Rosalina and Zero Suit in Smash 4, Peach was always Sam's number one, and he was rewarded for this loyalty with the release of Ultimate, where his princess quickly became regarded as one of the best characters in the game pretty universally. You could peg this up as a chicken in the egg situation too, as his incredible start to Ultimate, 5th at Let's Make Moves, 2nd at Smash Conference, 3rd at Genesis 6, and 4th at Summit, for sure swayed opinions on his character. Peach has had some adjustments patched in throughout the game's life cycle, but they haven't had any noticeable effect on Samsora's performances or the community's perception of the character. Samsora's defense of his rank of second best in the world this season has been a mixed bag. A ninth that Let's Make Big Move started his year on a sour note, losing to T and then being eliminated by Meister, who he continues to struggle against. A win at Tampa Never Sleeps 8 without dropping a set helped sweeten the year back up and got him prepared to fight his way up to grabbing a bronze medal at Genesis 7. There he took sets from MKLeo and Tweak while losing winner's finals to the event's champion Mars and lost the run back against Leo in loser's finals. Then most recent as of this video was the incredibly upset laden Frostbite where Samsora was one of many to fall the Toast's young link which led him to meeting his demise early in losers again to MKLeo who went on to win the event. So is he still second best in the world right now? I'd say it's pretty tight between him and Mars at the moment and I could see it's swaying either way depending on what you value more. I think the fog will start to clear as we get more data points from Samsora. But even if he falters at future events or finally places lower than 17th, Samsora has already built up an incredible legacy in the Smash community across multiple games and will continue for a very long time to be the first player that comes to mind when any Ultimate fan thinks of Peach. That takes us to the third character we'll be highlighting in this video, Jigglypuff, who sits on the complete opposite end of the tier list as Peach and is considered one of the game's worst characters. This makes our job of choosing a best main quite difficult because the puffball has next to zero representation at the highest level of the game, especially with Captain L appearing to drop the character halfway through 2019 to focus on Pikachu and Pichu. Hungrybox at first feels like the right choice with his years of experience playing melee at the highest level and recent win over Arfang at Frostbite. He's got so many 65ths, 97ths, and 129ths in his resume for Ultimate that I don't think he's found his footing quite yet in this Smash game, but that can pretty much be said about every Puff main in Ultimate. There's tons of promising players with good local wins, like Speckler and Sin from California, but there's been no standout performances by a Jigglypuff just yet. So, I think I'm going to stand by my gut reaction and go with Melee's best Jigglypuff also claiming the title of Ultimate's best Puff, mainly on the back of his legacy in other games making me more hopeful for his future in Ultimate. This is not a strong claim to the crown at all, and any other Puff who picks up a PGR win after this video comes out could easily be plugged in this spot instead. We then finish off this part of our best main series by talking about the best Bowser in the world, Leon from New Jersey. He'll most likely be one of the newest school players We'll be talking about in the series with his competitive career starting around 2018 in Smash 4. His first and only appearance on the New Jersey Smash 4 PR was a photo finish with him being ranked 15th best on the very last Smash 4 PR for the region. His payoff for staying true to Bowser from game to game wasn't nearly as dramatic as Samsora's was, but the character's improvements were significant enough to jump King Koopa from the bottom of high tier to around the middle of high tier depending on who you ask. But this little boost was all Leon needed to jump to 6th best in the state on the region's first ranking for Ultimate. However, his success in the game's early months wasn't just confined to the Garden State. Leon's ninth place at Smash and Splash in Wisconsin, where he beat Cosmos, Blank, and Arfang, is his best example of this from the first PGRU season. Showings like that are what allowed him to make his global ranking debut at 35th best in the world on the spring PGRU ranking. The fire burned even brighter as the cold weather brought us into the fall 2019 season. 13th at Glitch 7, 
ninth at Shine, fourth at Nightmare on Smashville, second at Defend the North, and a first place victory at 2GG's Run It Back, beating T, Wadi, and Umeki. The skill level of Ultimate's players was increasing at a rapid rate, and Leon not only kept up, but jumped up an extra seven spots to 28th best in the world with his string of great events in the fall. Unfortunately, we can't end this one on a happy note. 2020 has been a bumpy road so far for Bowser's biggest fan. He probably still has dibs over a top 50 spot at the moment, but his win list of Fatality, Pandarian, and Sinji is a little lacking. Leon's list of losses across the four events he's been to is probably the most concerning, with drop sets to Vinia's Greninja, DM's Pikachu, and Juice's Falco being the most concerning. I really hope for a turnaround for him at an event so we do actually get a happy ending to his story as of now, but... The recent trend says otherwise. And that about does it for this entry in the best mains in Ultimate series. Let us know down in the comments what you think about our choices. It was truly agonizing to make a choice for the Jigglypuff section, so I especially want to hear your thoughts about that one. We'll be continuing down the list in order, so be sure to also let us know which players you think we should be shining the spotlight on that are coming up soon, especially with more niche characters like Doc, Pit, and Diddy Kong. And to make sure you don't miss the next part, subscribe to Pro Guides and put those notifications on to make sure you don't miss out on any content on the competitive ultimate scene in the future.